Hey everyone, this is Fabio and welcome back. Today we're doing a game discussion video as I finally managed to find the time to play and beat a new game and we're going to talk about a third of the Jack and Daxter trilogy on PS Vita. Uh, so we're going to make a discussion about Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy, the first game in the Jack and Daxter series. Since this is the series that I'm going to focus on while playing something else. I'm going to play the whole Jack and Daxter games uh, while playing other games in between. Um, so, the Precursor Legacy, it's the first game of the now well-known Jack and Daxter series. It was originally developed by Naughty Dog and published in 2001 by Sony on <clears throat> the PlayStation 2. Uh, later uh, was re-released on PS3 as part of the HD collection uh, in 2012 and finally as I showed on Vita as the Jack and Dexter trilogy in 2013. Um, Jack and Dexter, it's a platformer game uh, in a 3D world with 3D graphics so you can interact with almost everything in your path in order to progress with the story and it's an item gathered base game the 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 best way, the only way to progress throughout the level is to gather objects basically but it also offered a lot of variety i think in order to do so there are different kind of gameplay of sub gameplay let's call it like that while the main staple it's still a, a simple a, plat, a 3D platformer game but let's go with order let's start with the story and uh, Jack and Daxter um, the precursor legacy it follows the story of Jack and his best friend Daxter who at the beginning of the game um, it's accidentally throw, threw into a pool of dark eco and transformed into this weird creature um, which is, I just want to say, I think Daxter is hilarious in a way, so I think it's very funny. But the dark eco, eco is the energy, it's this form of energy in the world of Jack and Daxter, which is divided into various types. So there are the two most powerful types, I believe, which are the light eco and the dark eco. Um, the, 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 Why the light eco is a combination of all the other kind of eco, with the exception of dark, the dark eco is the typical like dark and corruptive and something like that kind of energy, which is the main goal of the two main villains of the game. These two people called Gol and Maya. So Gol technically is the sage. There are various sages in this world, one for each kind of eco, and Gol is the sage of dark eco. And Maya, I suppose, is her apprentice or something. And together they want to release a huge quantity of dark eco into the world by activating this silo uh, created by an ancient civilization called the Precursors. Basically your objective is to stop them, while at the same time try to find a way to uh, return Daxter into his original form. So you take control of Jack. Um, interesting enough, he is a silent protagonist in the first game. I already started the second, and he actually talks in that. And I thought it's really funny how they do it, but we can talk about that when I'll finish Jack 2. And uh, you're helping the way by Samus, the sage, the green sage, I believe, of Green Eco, and his daughter Kira, who helps you in the way by creating weird machines like the Zoom Zoom, or just Zoom, I don't remember now or lending you a sort of running flying bird for different sections of the game. As I, as I said, um, some certain sections of the game can be played in a different way, not just as a platformer, but let's go with order. So the main idea of the game is just to stop these two people from releasing Dark Eco while trying to return Daxter to normal. And you progress through levels um, of different kind and the main objective of all the levels is basically um, gathering three kind of objects. Uh, first of all, and most important for the stories, are the power cells, which are uh, precursors energy orbs, basically. Then there are these uh, egg-shaped thing called precursor orbs, 
uh, which are a form of currency in a way. You can exchange during the game these orbs for power cells in certain levels and certain sections. So you have to collect them as much as you can. And finally, as a sort of bonus or something, you can collect these strange creatures called scout flies, which are hidden in the levels. And if you manage to collect all seven of them, because each level has uh, seven of these uh, scout flies um, spread throughout the level, uh, you'll get a power cell for all seven of them. Um, so that by the end of the game, you should have collected 101 power cells. So the story, as you can say, it's it's quite simple, but uh, I think that the world and the kind of characters has, have a lot of charm. It's a really colorful world. I mean, for 2001 and 2, because the game was released in late 2001, so I let's just say early to, late 2001, early 2002, it's a gorgeous looking game, and it looks gorgeous on the Vita. Honestly, I don't know if the Vita version is in HD, like the PS3, I'm not sure, but it still looks gorgeous. I've already tried, as I said, Jack 2, and it looks really good, but you know, personally, graphics aren't everything for me, actually, they're not very important, and even though um, Jack and Dexter on, v on the Vita are not the HD version, there still looks really good. It's a really good looking game, I think. It's kind of cartoony, of course, but, you know, it, it's a platformer. You, you don't need to have, like, a realistic uh, kind of graphics in a, in a Jack and Dexter game. That would be kind of weird, actually, and scary. And um, I really like the characters. Um, the first game, maybe, uh, the main focus, rightly so, it's Jack and Dexter, naturally. And it's very funny the way the two of them interact with each other and with other characters as well. Since, as I said, Jack is a silent character, in, it's a silent protagonist in this game, but with the sequels it suggests that he can actually talk. But it's funny that you can almost suggest that he's always interrupted by, by the other characters, like he tries to talk, but especially Daxter always interrupts him and avoids him to talk. And as a, as like a little spoiler from the Jack 2 Renegade, the, the, the following game, he actually talks in that. And it's funny that the, when he does, um, it's because like Daxter, <laughs> was, I, find, I think it was very funny, Daxter like screaming to him like, for once in your life, just talk, uh, when he was like unconscious, and, Dax, and Jack started to yell at him. Um, that was really nice, I think, especially after he never uh, talked in, during the first game. I think it was done very well. Um, why all the other characters, with the exception of Jack, talk constantly. And one of my favorite thing in the um, while progressing during the game was looking at all, uh, how funny is the interaction between Jack and Daxter by doing their dances when you manage to find a power cell, like uh, like Daxter doing the robo dance or something. That was really nice. And also, like, interact with the other characters, and it's a really interesting world, I think. it's It has this tribal vibe, in a way, that you can find in the soundtrack as well, I think, um, with this all weird ruins and artifacts from an ancient civilization. It's an interesting world, and I really want to explore it more, because I think the story of Precursor Legacy, of course, it's just a, a third of a bigger story, since it's a trilogy. I don't know if they started with that idea, or as the game did very well, I mean, it was critis was praised by critics when it was released, uh, they decided to make more and more games, I have no idea of that, um, but I'm really curious to see the story progressing in the other two games, to see the overall story, like, to maybe discover more about the precursors, or... Um, like, why they disappeared and everything, like, that's, that's the main question that's you, you are asked at the beginning of the game, when you just started, there's Samus talking and says, like, who were the precursors, why they disappeared, and it's, I would like to know more about them. So, um, as I said, as a platformer, you progress through the levels by collecting uh, the power cells, the precursor orbs, and the scout flies, and um, in doing so, you also, very important in the game is, as I said before, the eco, this energy, because there are various types. 
Mm, I mentioned before the light and dark eco, but you cannot use them during the game. Not especially not the dark eco, the light eco as an important but small part during the final battle. While on the other hand, during the game there are various types of eco that you can use and you must use actually to progress through a level. Like there is the green eco, which actually restores your health because there is a, a health meter. So when you're all power up, you can take up to four hits from enemies before you die. Or, but of course, if you like fall into a pit or into a pool of dark eco, you'll die instantly. And that's probably the most common way to die, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but if you're hit, you can collect up to 50 small um, uh, orbs of green eco, and you can restore your health progressively. There's blue eco, who that um, increases Jack's speed and also f functions as a sort of magnet for uh, like green and blue eco cells. Or like it allows like um, things hidden into boxes or treasure chests to explode as they are attracted by the blue eco. It's an interesting thing, but when you're you speed up because of blue eco, you're it's more difficult to control Jack. Uh, then there is yellow eco that allows you to throw fireballs. It's very useful against enemies and bosses, especially. But there are many bosses in this game. Then there is red eco that increases your physical abilities, so your regular attacks are more powerful. And that's about it, I think, actually. I think that's it. So there are these six. So dark, light, green, blue, yellow, and red. Yes, six kind of ecos that are very important for the game. Um, the variety. As I said, the game is a platformer, and for the most part, it's like that. You have to explore these levels, find the power cells, uh, precursor orbs, the scout flies, in order to progress and discover other levels, um, because there isn't a real sense of direction, I think, and it's not a criticize or a complain, it's just that you have to explore this world in a way to find the, ro the, the road to the next level, for example, and it's not very obscure or hidden, after a while you'll know where you have to go. Um, but the game offers also Quite a lot of variety, and I like that. There are sections with, that you have to use this zoom machine, which is a sort of mm, sprinter, speeder, uh, I don't know how to call it, that allows you to move very fast and to um, and kind of makes the game a sort of a sort of driving stage. And that it's into, it's not really driving, but you explore bigger levels with this very fast. Uh, machine and there are two sections of the games like the fire canyon and the lava tube that it allows you it's the only way to progress throughout these levels and uh, you have to do it re as fast as you can so you before the the zoom explodes uh, because you cannot it, it cannot take too much of the high temperature and other sections includes also like a sort of big bird that you can rise and allows you to jump very high and fly for short distances. So it offers also a lot of variety, that it's nice. But let me talk about the most annoying thing with this game, because overall, uh, I, even though I haven't mentioned, I love this game, I have a lot of fun, and even though I'm not really a veteran in 3D platformers, um, I really enjoy it because I like the, the setting, I really like the characters, especially the two protagonists. Um, I like this world, as I said, it has this sort of tribal vibe, but also with covered with the ruins of an ancient civilization, so I really want to explore this world more. But there is a frustrating aspect in this game, which to me is the gameplay itself. And overall I liked it, but and it's something that really uh, annoyed me just like at the end of the game. Uh, let me explain better. As a platformer, um, as a 3D platformer, there is, I think, the best way to describe this game, and certain sections of the game, it's trial and error. Basically, you you will do a certain level a lot of times, because you will fall into a pit that you didn't know was there, then you were able to like jump over this to a platform, but you you didn't know there was a platform, so you fall, so you do it, like, hands and repeat, hands and repeat, until you have all the pattern memorized, 
So you can do it and progress and find, for example, a power cell at the end of the tunnel or something like this. So there is a frustration element that, um, however, it's not as strong up until, it's not very strong until the the last level. So I think that the two most, most frustrating, and they were really frustrating, are the ice level, the snowy mountain, ice mountain, and remember, so the um, unmissable, there, there has to be a snow level, which is very annoying because of course like there are sections with the ice that um, it's difficult to control Jack on that. But uh, and then of course the final level that I can understand it's the, the last level of the game, but it was insanely annoying because it's all a, just an, a, a constant falling into these pits because it's all about falling bridges, moving platforms. It was really frustrating, but I managed to, of, of course, to beat it, but it was really annoying. And thank God the PS Vita is so expensive because I was moments away from throwing my, my Vita uh, throughout the room, like, Argh! in frustration, especially with these two levels, because the others were not this annoying most of the time. Like the Spider K, for example, it was more about um, puzzles or like finding the right rhythm or, or certain platforms. <clears throat> it wasn't as frustrating, but the Ice Mountain was really annoying for certain elements, and the last level was insanely annoying. I mean, that, that's, I think, the worst level of the game in terms of frustration. And as I said, it's all about, hence, like, trial and error. That's the best definition for this game. That on, I just think that the last level went a bit too far with that, because up until that, I was okay. Uh, of, yes, some sections were annoying, but maybe that's the way platformers work. I'm not a veteran of the genre. I don't mind it, I liked it, but I haven't played as many, especially in the last years. It's been a while since I've played a platformer, so I've focused mainly on RPGs, uh, side-scrollers, and uh, like survival horror, but especially RPGs lately. And as I said, I, I was kind of rusty, I have to say, when I started to play the game. But uh, I managed to do it, and, and but as I said, the last level just went too far, but... I, ma I actually managed to do it in a couple of days, but I died, I think, three million times on that level. I was constantly falling. Um, and again, like, the snow level was also very difficult. But these were the two most annoying and most difficult levels. The others were doable. Sometimes, yes, you just have to explore this level in order to have a better idea where the power cells, the orbs, and the flies are hidden, but that was normal. And I just I, to me, it's just the, these two levels. The snow was already difficult, but the last level. But as I said, I can understand. It's the final level of the game. It has to be more difficult. But I was like, my God, this is difficult and annoying. Um, so overall, uh, I really like this game. The music. I forgot to mention the music of the game. I think it's uh, okay. It's not a phenomenal soundtrack to me. I liked certain uh, tracks of the game, others were not very, uh, I don't want to say inspiring, were not memorable, there you go. Sometimes it was very nice, especially certain sections of the game. Um, I, th I really like the main theme of the game, that it's played in the, during the title screen, which has this, as I said, as I mentioned it, this um, tribal vibe, it has like drums, um, certain kind of music. It really uh, sets the tone for the game, but overall it was not really memorable, but the tracks that were good were really good, I think. And that was the best, because it really um, sets the tone for the setting of the game, of this world, as I said. It's tr sort of tribal. It has this tribal feeling for whatever reason for me, and I really like that, but for the most part it was okay, it's a nice soundtrack. It it was it fit very it fits very well with the game and the sections of the game, but it was not that memorable. So I hope that the next games um, have more interesting soundtracks. Because I say I started to play Jack Two, and the first level after the prison it's this town. So I will we'll see how the music, uh, how the soundtracks will um, develops in the next games. 
Because as we know, the Jack and Dexter series is made up by four main games plus a, a racing game that was weird. So there is Jack 1, 2, and 3, and Lost Frontier, um, which it's technically not... Ja I don't think it's a fourth game in the series. It's like a more of a spin-off, but we'll see when I manage to get there. Um, so... I'll try to focus my effort on the Jack and Dexter series. I want to beat all these games because I really liked the first game. Frustration aside, that it's a part I think of <clears throat> the platformer genre. It's it goes hand to hand with the frustration of trial and error. Now, that's normal. I was just out of practice, but um, overall, I, li I really like the story. I re in its simplicity for the first game, but I know and I'm sure that the next games will increase like uh, certain aspects of the story. I can already see in the second game there is much more darker, for example. Um, I really like the story, as I said. I really like the characters, uh, especially Jack and Daxter. Naturally, like Daxter, it's I found it if, if I found it very funny the way he always yells. It's so obnoxious sometimes, but in a positive way. Uh, it's the companion that you want to have on, a cer on certain things. Um, like, it's not really a spoiler. It's the first thing that happens in the first game, in the second game. It's, uh, I love the idea when Jack is kidnapped. Uh, you can hear Daxter's voice say, "Don't worry, buddy. I'll save you before you know." And then, like two years later, I mean, okay, I'm still waiting for you, Daxter. That was really funny, I think. But enough with Jack 2, uh, just started the game. Just um, So I really like the setting of this. I re I'm really curious to explore this world more because it has so much potential that I think the next games will really um, increase the level of explorations and discovery about like the precursors and this world, which it's a fact that I'm really curious about. And of course, I mean, I love the gameplay and... It's a really, really nice platformer. So uh, I highly recommend the Jack and Dexter trilogy on PS Vita. Uh, I was, I just wanted to focus on each game and talk about them individually. But if you haven't played, like me, the original games, simply because at the time I didn't own a PS2, uh, this, I think, it's a really good way, because playing these games on the go also is really, really a great idea. Probably if you want the big and better graphics, you have to buy the PS3 collection, the HD one. But I say, go portable. This is a really nice package for the Vita. I don't think it's too expensive as well. So definitely get the Jack and Daxter trilogy. It's a great deal for the PS Vita. And a nice way to re-explore these games, which are classic of the PlayStation library. So that's it about Jack and Daxter Precursor Legacy. Um, the same time I'm playing Jack 2 and another game, so we'll see you next time, continuing this sort of new marathon in a way, since I want to focus on this series now, because I'm really falling in love with it. But with, with its fun, its uh, quirkiness in a way, but its settings and its characters, it's so good, I really liked it, and I cannot wait to play more. Uh, so guys, like always, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, and take care.